The Book of Ruth, Chapter 1. We got much reading to do. Now it came to pass in the days when judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. Okay, here's the famine. A certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn, that's a temporary dwelling, in the country of Moab. All right, he's leaving Israel. He's leaving God for Moab because of a famine. He, his wife, and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech. And the name of his wife was Naomi. The name of his children were Mahan and Chilon. Ephraites of Bethlehem, Judah, Jewish. And they came into the country of Moab, the enemy, and continued there. Sojourn. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And he was left and her two sons. She was left and her two sons. So they go, they run to Moab in a famine. And there's death. And they took them wives of the women of Moab, mixed marriage, violated the law, and the name of one was Ruth. The name of one was Ophrah. And the name of the other was Ruth. And dwelt there about ten years. Ten to Gentile number. Here is two Gentile women that married two Gentile men. That fled Israel because of a family. And Milhan and Chilhan died. Also both of them. And a the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. So Naomi has nobody left. Her husband has died. Her sons have died. She's got these two daughter-in-laws. Verse 14. They lifted up the voice and wept again and Ophrah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth claved unto her. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people, unto her gods. Ophrah's gone. Ophrah didn't learn anything about Jehovah God. Verse 18, when they saw that they was steadfastly minded to go with her, she left off speaking unto her. Okay, we're going back. So they two, the two, how many did we start off with? The two, Naomi and Ruth. Came to Bethlehem, and it came to pass, they, they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved with women about them. And they said, is this Naomi? I didn't recognize her, I guess. She said to them, call me not Naomi, but come, call me Myra. Your old money has dealt very bitterly against me. You know, you know what? You know what happened to Naomi? She got bitter. She got angry. She got sore. She lost the husband. She lost a husband. She lost her two sons. One of her daughters went back. All the time, hey, here's my own. Listen, I'm bitter. Leave me alone. I'm bitter. Now, there was bread in the land, but there was a famine. And the, 
and God caused the bread to come. Had Abimelech waited, had Abimelech been not so quick to take his family away from God, there was death. There was abandonment. That was also. There was that famine. There's bitterness. There was a loss of bread, and there was bread back. Then there's a hope. At the end of the book, Ruth will get with Broaz. They will marry. We will have David. We will have the kings of Judah, and we will have Jesus Christ. But look at the hardship. Look at the troubles, because they ran. They ran. In Genesis 12. Genesis 12. Don't be so quick to run with problems. And listen, friend. Listen, friend, I'm preaching to me, too. Okay? I'm like, oh, you know, Tyler's never done that. Tyler's been faithful all the time. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. Man, I've had to stop my life all and start it again all over again because of my failures and my sins. Don't tell me. Genesis 12 10. This is Abram. Abram. He's a Jew. Well, yeah, he's a Jew. And there was a famine. There's that famine again. And I'm going to tell you one warning right now in America. This is, I believe today is May the 5th, 2024. I believe. Get me wrong. There will be a famine in America, not if, but when. You won't get your groceries like you wanted to. And there's coming a time when you want your groceries and you, you want your telephone time and, and you want all this nonsense. You're going to have to do it under the socialistic government of the Antichrist. It's all going to have to come from him. And that's by the mark. There will be no middle class in the tribulation period. And you see, here's the famine. Let's see what Abram does. And Abram went down to Egypt. Well, Abimelech went to Moab. That's two places in the Bible God's told those Jews, don't go. He goes into Egypt and sojourns. See that word again? That's the same word in the book of Ruth. So darn. That's a temporary dwelling. For the famine was grievous in the land. And it came to pass when he was come near to Egypt. That he said unto Sarai his wife. Sarah. Behold now I know that thou art a fair, to, fair woman to look upon. Ooh, I know you're beautiful babe. All right. Therefore, it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, that they shall say, this is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. So there's going to be murder. That's how much he trusts the Egyptians. He runs down to Egypt for, for a famine, but he does not trust the Egyptians with him and his wife. That's like you packing up, putting, getting your suitcases, getting an airplane, getting on the cruise, wherever you go, and you go somewhere where they're going to kill you and dispose of you. And there are places in the world today you don't go. 
because of that. So <laughs> he's afraid. I can imagine what Elimelech felt, grabbing his family and going. It shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, they shall say, this is his wife, they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. And I pray thee, thou art my, I, I say, I pray thee, thou art my sister. I want you to lie to them. I want you to lie to them. Nice, nice husband. They may be well with me for thy sake. And my soul shall live because of thee. Why are you in Egypt? What are you doing there if you're so afraid? If you think Egypt is a terror to you and to your wife, what are you doing there? You have just talked to Jehovah. Jehovah, the Lord God, is giving you promises. And God put a famine. Now, this, is, this could be big words. I don't know how I'm going to handle it. If a famine lies in America during my time, I don't know. But what are you doing in Egypt? What were you doing in Moab? And Limanek, his two sons never came back. They were buried in non-Israeli land. Abram and Sarai are in Egypt. They don't belong there. And it came to pass that when Abram was come into Egypt, the Egyptians behold the woman that she was very fair. The princess also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. They stole her from Abram. And Abr Abram put up no fight. And he entreated Abram well for her sake. He had sheep and oxen and he asses and manservants and maidservants and she asses and camels and Abraham got rich off that lie. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah, Sarai, Abraham's wife. And Abraham called, I mean, Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? Ah, he got caught in the lie, didn't he? He got caught in his lie. But he didn't need to go there. He didn't have to be there. He was there. You know what happened? Naomi lost a husband and two sons and a daughter-in-law. Abraham loses his character and loses the self-respect with Pharaoh. And that famine, and there may be other things, you may get a famine in your area. Your household, your city, 
Your thing, your country, I don't know. You may get in a financial crisis. You may get into trouble. And then they ran to the enemy of Israel, Moab. Abraham ran into Egypt, an enemy of God. Second Kings 8, verse 1. Those men did wrong. And I'm going to show you what they did wrong. Second Kings 8. Then spake Elijah unto the woman whose son she had restored to life. All right, there was a death. Her son died. And God used him to resurrect him. Okay. Arise and go thou and thy household and shall journ. There's that word again. It's a temporary dwelling. Wheresoever thou canst sojourn, for the Lord, that's Jehovah, has called for a famine. There's a famine. There's a famine. There's a sojourn. And it shall also come upon the land seven years. So, this prophet Elijah says, hey, there's famine. The Lord says, leave. Sojourn somewhere. A temporary dwelling. God said, go. Where did God tell Abraham to go? Go back and read it. God didn't tell him anything with that family. Abraham packed up what he had and he left on his own. He left without any promises of God. He left without the permission of God. Elimic and Naomi and their two sons. A famine in the land. They went to sojourn. Where was God to say go and sojourn? Nowhere. Go back and read Ruth. Ruth is four chapters. Elimelech left on his own. He died. Abraham left on his own. How do you think Mrs. Abraham will felt? Honey, lie for me. Every woman wants a man's going to protect her. This widow woman that Elijah came to in that pot in the meal was there every day for her her son, and Elijah. Every day. That son died. And she got a little mad. Elijah took him. He had a kind of CPR thing there. He was resurrected. She followed and obeyed the Lord. And the Lord said to Elijah, there's a famine coming. She needs to sojourn by the permission of God. And a woman arose and did after the saying of the man of God, and she went with her household and sojourned in a land of Philistines seven years. Uh oh. She went to the Philistines. They're not good. Elimelech went to Moab. Abram went to 
Egypt. But they did not get permission from God. And it came to pass at the seven years end that the woman returned out of the land of Philistines, sojourn, she came back, and she went forth to cry unto the king for her house and for her land. And the king talked with Gazil, he's the servant of Elijah, the servant of the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elijah had done. Now, the king just happened to be talking to Gazil one day. Hey, how great is Elijah? What has he done? And it came to pass as he was telling the king how he restored a dead body, that's the boy, that behold, the woman whose son he had restored to life, the mother, cried to the king for her house and for her land. So Gazil tells the king, hey, you won't believe it. There was, this, there was this young lad, this young man. He was dead. He came back to life. And here's this woman. She comes up to the king. King, give me my land. Give me my house. And Gazil said, my lord, O king, this is the woman, this is her son, whom Elijah restored unto the state. The woman I was just telling you about. The son of his sister. There she is, king. That's her. Amazing how God, giving this woman permission to leave, to sojourn out of the famine. The famine is over. She comes back like God told her. Just happened God would have because even the king talking about this very woman's son and Elijah, that here she comes and because he's like, hey, there she is. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed unto her a certain officer saying, restore all that she is hers, all the fruits of the field. Once the day that she left the land, even unto now. You know what happened to that woman when she obeyed God? There were no lies. There was no death. And she got everything back. Because God told her to go. God didn't tell Abram to go. God may have had something else for Abram. God didn't tell him the minute to go. And there are times in our life, whether it be a famine, whatever it be, and I know because I'm preaching to myself, there will be times, and there has been times, may be present, whether the past, whether the now, or the future, be times that you make a decision to move, any kind of movement. You go somewhere, you buy something, you occupy, whatever it is, and you're going to make that choice. And God's not in it. And you don't end up with a blessing. Does it end up with a blessing? Okay, with, with Ruth, it does. Then we have the line of Jesus Christ. That's God's mercy. Do you know what happened? When Abraham went down to Egypt, he got Hagar. 
Hagar was bought, sold, whatever. And you know what happened to him, Hagar and Sarah? Do you know what the result of Hagar is to today's politics in the Middle East? The result of the Palestine, the Middle Eastern battles against Israel is one of the things that Abraham went down into Egypt, God didn't tell him, and he came out with riches. And Sarai came out, Sarah came out with a maid. And friend, his, the, the market of the history and the battles of Ishmael and the Arabian. You know, it's just as simple. And it's hard. <laughs> it's just as simple, but it's hard. To put your faith and trust in God. When you have no money, you have no gasoline, you have no food, maybe you ain't got no help. I don't know. And you get the idea I'll run to the world. Instead, Instead of God. Hey, listen, if you're going to go run and get help, seek God first. You need a doctor, seek God first. God first. That's the way. And with that, I would advise you to, to read I get his name out. Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan. It's an excellent book for the Christian walk. That's an excellent book on decisions made right and decisions made wrong. And a lot of times the consequences of them decisions. We can walk for God. But are we going to walk Correctly for God. It takes much prayer. It takes reading and studying your Bible. It takes counseling. Just don't get up and go. That's the wrong thing to do. 